B85ME from 2014. Quite the ancient artifact. For relics like this, you need a serious archaeologist. Here it is in all its ancient glory. Intel Core i7-4790K CPU, 32GB of DDR3 RAM and the infamous Quattro K6000 NVIDIA GPU. The Quattro K6000 is a refurbished card which I bought way later used for $240 Canadian. Because I'm neither rich nor insane. My main system started out with a Quattro K2200. But this card will be transferred into this Dell Optiplex as soon as I figured out uh, how to make it fit the case. Anyhow, I did install Fedora on my main system, simply because I had relatively good experiences with Red Hat back in the day and I actually do like fedoras. Let's have a look at my weird switchover solution and which Linux distro I ultimately settled for. My genius solution is right behind here. And no, it has nothing to do with the Blu-ray or the DVD drive. Behind this panel is this little AliExpress special gimmicky thing. I have four SATA drives in here. They are all SSDs and therefore they are actually hot swappable. So if I want to run Linux, I press this button. This over here is a shared drive and this over here was my Windows drive. If there were some programs I hadn't figured out in Linux yet, I could operate them on Windows, put the files on this drive and then pull them over into Linux later. I came up with this solution because this B stands for Batocera if I want to do some retro gaming on this machine. Batocera actually somewhat recommends to disconnect all the drives you don't want to install Batocera on because if you choose the wrong one it will wipe everything that's on there. There's not really a install Batocera parallel to something else option. If I want to move some files from my Linux drive to Batocera for instance, boot Linux, when it's booted, activate this one, it acts just like a file sharing drive, move the files over and you're good to go. A little bit weird, a little bit janky and probably also overkill born out of unnecessary paranoia. Paranoia born from dual boot horror stories from the internet. Anyways, I didn't stick with Fedora for too long, mainly because I didn't like the workflow with their GNOME desktop solution. Also because of my strange hardware configuration. So ultimately I settled on Ubuntu Studio 2404, noble numbat. This is about a time where you can blow up the comment section and tell everyone how terrible Ubuntu is and how bloated Ubuntu Studio is in particular. But what can I say? I really, really like it. It works well out of the box with my system and I really like that it comes with a lot of pre-installed and pre-configured creator-focused apps. So I don't have to go dig around and figure out what are they called on Linux. It's not that I need all of them, but it's nice to have them and you can play around and then figure out which ones work for your workflow and then keep using them. It is really a comfortable out of the box experience. Don't get me wrong, not everything is always sunshine in Linux land either, but very often if the clouds roll in, 
and your system feels slow or bogged down, there are solutions that you can find that are not as obvious under Windows. The terminal is neither scary nor complicated. On the contrary, it can be a very powerful companion. I experienced this weird boot behavior where it took forever to load. Okay, let's speed this up. And I was never certain if the system would assemble my desktop environment properly. Well, it always did, but it felt a bit scary. But then there was also this weird behavior from the file manager, Dolphin. It felt almost Windows Vista-esque. Also, my picture viewer would take forever to open a simple JPEG. In the past with Windows, I would have just checked the auto start programs and that's about it. If nothing would have changed, I just blamed my entire system for the slow boot. However, Linux has this nifty command system analyze space blame. Yeah, you can figure out what is to blame in your system. And also system analyze space critical dash chain. I think. With these two commands, you then get some kind of a prompt in the terminal, which I'm not able to really understand. So I just copy and pasted it into ChatGPT and asked what it can tell me about this thing. Well, I already knew that my front I.O., in particular the USB hub, was a little bit flaky. And ChatGPT analyzed the terminal output and said that indeed Linux tried to basically ping my front I.O. during the boot process several times until it eventually either way timed out or it was able to establish a connection, whichever came first. And that's what took so long during the boot process. Simply disconnecting the front I.O. fixed the issue for now and uh, the replacement is already here, which will be installed at some point. And since I was already in the ChatGPT flow, I just asked about the weird long load time for simple JPEGs. I was then advised to, instead of opening the program via the GUI, just open it via the terminal and see what the terminal output would be. Once again, there came a list with things which looked like dependencies, but I was not quite sure. So I copy and pasted it into ChatGPT and said, what's the matter with this? It turned out that the application tried to load some obscure raw camera plugins. One of which was from a Hasselblad camera. I never heard of Hasselblad, but apparently it was the camera that was used for the moon landing. Who knew? Anyhow, I wanted my JPEGs to load in a decent time, not two minutes or whatever. JetGPD asked me then if it should find the appropriate package to download that would support all these raw files. So I said, sure. JetGPD then found me the appropriate packages to download and also gave me the terminal command, which apparently downloads these packages, a voila, my picture viewer works again. Also, my Dolphin file manager works now appropriately without this weird glitch I showed you earlier. The terminal is really, really helpful. Not necessary for everyday use, but really nice to have if you need it. So I would recommend to get yourself some Linux distros, install them and figure out which one works for your workflow. Thanks for watching. See you next time.